Hello and welcome back to Godfather Minute. Minute. My name is Alex Robinson. And I'm Andy Robinson. And together we are the Godfather, Godfather Minute, Minute Brothers. Brothers. Here to talk about Minute 103. 103. The buzz. <laughs> the buzz. That's what we should do every episode now. Is what? When we when we bring it in like this, we, we come up with new call letters based on what happens in this minute. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. In that case, 103, the snooze. <laughs> Soft 103. <laughs> yeah. Alex, repeat after me. E minuto. E minuto. Numero. Numero. Cento tre. Cento tre. Cento tre. Cento tre. You got it. Cento sounds like Jenko. It'd mm. be true if Pop mm. was still around. <laughs> Does she say it's Pop or did she say my father were still here? I think she says my father. My father. My father. Yeah. Not our father. I think she says my father. Oh, yeah, because yeah. who's the one who asks? Merle. Is Merle the one who asks? What no, does that mean? No, it's Fredo's wife. Oh, Fredo's wife. She says, Chen. She says wrong. She's like, Chegani. What's that? <laughs> Chentani. It means 100 years. It'd be true if, Chen- if Pop's conciliary was still alive. Look what I got. <laughs> It'd be true if Papa was still alive. <laughs> Uh, so minute, uh, cento tre. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Nice. Nice work. Uh, minute cento tre. We're still in Sicily, folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, at Mikey's request, Fabrizio, uh, fetches Apollonia's father from the, uh, back of the restaurant. Uh, he emerges with mm-hmm. two thugs, two thuggish looking guys with them. Mm-hmm. Is that, I shouldn't say that. They're just two, two gentlemen. Yeah. I don't know what they're the Hardworking is. Sicilian. Well, we don't know if they're hardworking. Men. We don't know anything true. about them. You're right. We don't You're know right. how they earn their money. We don't know. <laughs> Why'd you say they were thugs then? Because I because they feels like they're oh because they're Sicilian. Well, right. no, but also they come out like behind the guy yeah. like they're getting ready to kick some yeah, butt. That's so. true. Um, well, wouldn't you be thuggish if a bunch of strangers came along? If my, and if my sister was that hot, you damn right I'd be thuggish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but in any case, Mikey apologizes for the disrespect mm-hmm. and reveals that he is. Miguel Corleone. Yeah. Miguel Michael Corleone. Do you give up looking for girls in the countryside? I do. I do give this up. <laughs> um, I just realized that organ is reminiscent of a soap opera. Hmm. Interesting. It doesn't sound like that, but right when a, an important dialogue line is given, you have the organ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Um, you know, my wife, you, uh, when we started doing this podcast, she's like, you're going to be doing uh, this, God, this Godfather, Godfather Minutes podcast? And I said, yeah, it's a great movie. She says, it's a, it's a, um, uh, a soap opera for boys. Oh, is that what she said? She said that. She diminished it. Wow. Down to a soap opera for boys. Or was she I saying said, that? I said, you don't understand. We have this bonus, Sarah. <laughs> and he asked for friendship <laughs> until Corleone needs respect. You don't get it. And Connie needs to get money to book passage on the Queen. <laughs> maybe she did, maybe she answered it in a complimentary way. Or maybe she's right. Mm. Hey. I, okay, I, well, that's it for a minute. Cento tre. All right. right? <laughs> See you next time Still, on The yeah. Godfather Minute. We can't, have the, we can't have the minute there. It's no, too short. We can't have the minute there. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, it actually <laughs> would be funny, a la soap opera. We say, oh, like tune in next time. <laughs> Will, <laughs> Will, uh, Will, uh, Don Vitelli and his sons uh, beat up uh, Fabrizio, Miguel, and Carlo. Tune in next time mm-hmm. on The Godfather, Godfather Man. Man. So, so what do you got for this minute? So I feel like you should go first since the last time I totally, I totally, uh, <laughs> yeah, they totally you bit, bit all your, uh, yeah, things. that's okay. Well, let me start. I have just as few notes this episode as I did last week, but I, I feel like we pulled it off last week. Yeah. We yeah. provided the listeners with some good it. stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, let me start with my summary. Okay. <laughs> mine's always a little different from yours. Michael introduces himself to Signor Vitelli and apologizes to him. Hmm. That's, yeah. All right. So we'll see you next. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, all my stuff is from the book. Hmm. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, Don Vitelli. <laughs> he is ready. No. 
Okay, here we go. Let's see. This is minute one of three. Okay. Page 333. Minute 333. That's the hot 333. Half Satan. Uh, Puzzo writes, Fabrizio said, the old bastard mentioned he has two sons, big tough lads that he has only to whistle up. Let's get going. Michael gave him a cold stare. Up to now, he had been a quiet, gentle young man, a typical American, except that since he was hiding in Sicily, he must have done something manly. This was the first time the shepherds had seen the Corleone stare. Mm. Don Tomasino, knowing Michael's true identity and deed, had always been wary of him, treating him as a fellow, quote, man of respect. But these unsophisticated sheep herders had come to their own opinion of Michael, and not a wise one. The cold look, Michael's rigid white face, his anger that came off him like cold smoke off ice, sobered their laughter and snuffed out their familiar friendliness. Why is he so mad? Yeah, I guess in the book it's... Yeah, you don't get that impression in the movie. In the movie, Fabrizio says, let's get going. And Michael says, no, no, like, yeah, he call him in. He doesn't seem angry. Yeah. Puzo writes, when he, this is Michael, when he saw he had their proper, respectful attention, Michael said to them, get that man out here to me. So I don't know. The, I'm not sure yeah. why. Maybe they, I know in the upcoming minutes, as Michael is talking to Don Vitelli, and convincing him that he should allow him to meet Apollonia and get to know him, uh, that takes a bit of respect and trust. Yeah. And so maybe this is ramping up to that. Like right now, the or prior to this, the, the <laughs> like how Puzo refers to them as the sheep herders. Prior to that, the sheep herders don't they don't they, they take him seriously, but just so much. Yeah. And so this is a way for him to. To really show them that he deserves more respect. Yeah. I guess we don't really see a lot of the relationship between Mikey and the bodyguards. Mm -hmm. Like they seem very friendly to me and I never, it never occurred to me that they would think that he was a lesser person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I guess in the book they could, they could allow for a bit more subtlety and, and, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and that Puzo wrote earlier that they don't know exactly who he is. Right, but they just know he's from America. America. He's a made man, right? He made his bones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if Fabrizio and Carlo know that, but they probably are Don Tomasino does. Yes. So he said he knew, he knew, he the, knew deed. the deed. Yeah. 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 So there's another in- interesting, uh, different, very interesting difference in the book. So in the movie, in this scene, I believe in this minute, Michael says, he introduces himself. He says, I'm Michael yeah. Corleone. Miguel Col- Corleone. Yeah. In the book... Come up with um, an alias. He's, he's, without even hesitating, Michael said, I am an American hiding in Sicily from the police of my country. My name is Michael. He doesn't say Corleone. Hmm. Which interesting. I think is, it is interesting, and that's a huge difference, especially when you're hiding out from, from people that are after or, or trying to kill you after the, the, the killings that he did. It seems very unsafe, very unsafe to reveal that. And in the book, boom, now Fabrizio and Carlo know exactly who he is. And oh, because this, he says he... He says in front of them, in the movie, he says, I'm Michael Corleone, but Fabrizio and Carlo didn't know that up to this point. Right. So wait, so you're saying in the book... In the book, he just says, I'm Michael. But he does say he's on the run from the police. Yes. Here, he does, in the movie, he doesn't say, I'm on the run from the police. He just says, I'm hiding in Sicily. That's right. He doesn't yeah. say specifically yeah. like what he did or anything. Yeah. So it's kind of a mixed bag between yeah. the two. <laughs> it's yeah, like, I guess what's what's a better cover? Yeah. Well, I guess giving your name, though, because I don't know. Maybe there are a lot of people with the name Corleone who are from Corleone in well, America. That's well, that's what I was going to say. It would be, I wonder if he, in the book, well, first of all, I think him saying his whole name is a, is a stronger choice because it's indicating, like, I'm putting my trust in you, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. As well as I'm, just, I'm Mikey. Yeah, I'm Mikey Roth. <laughs> <laughs> um. But uh, I, I'm I'm Mikey Green. Is my credit good enough to buy you out for this restaurant? 
You no. Make, you, America's gonna make me make me laugh. <laughs> um, I totally forgot what I was gonna say. What were we talking about? The uh, uh, about what's a it's a better choice that he says Michael Corleone. Oh, right. But why he doesn't say his last name is because like his they're in the town of Corleone, and he says like my name is Michael Corleone. It would be like someone coming to Portland and being like my name is Johnny Portland. <laughs> like what? <laughs> that would make you lose respect instantly. Yeah, for the person. Yeah. So maybe that's why he doesn't say. <laughs> I really Michael. like your daughter. You can trust me. I'm Johnny Portland. I'm on the run from the police. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you think about it, it's like there's no redeeming traits in this guy. <laughs> Although maybe in Sicily, maybe being on the run from the police is a yeah. mark of pride yeah. because there's so much. So much uh, and Puzo writes a lot more about that, but I have to say that for the next minute. Oh yeah, because can. that's when they yeah. start yeah. interacting more about mm-hmm. that. Yeah, Johnny Portland. <laughs> I killed a cop. That might be the name of this episode. Johnny Portland. Johnny Portland. Or Mo, like Mo, Mo Vegas. <laughs> oh, I see. That's a cool that's name. That's a great yeah, name, yeah. yeah. I was once uh, writing a story and I uh, needed a uh, Iranian uh, name. Mm-hmm. And so I, I can't remember how I did it. Iranian? Just, and I, yeah, the person was mm-hmm. supposed to be of Iranian descent. Mm. So I said, uh, let me look up an Iranian last name or a name. And I used the name um, Persepolis. Mm. which is actually the name of a city in Iran. Mm. And I was talking with someone like, you can't call him that. That's like calling <laughs> someone Johnny Los Angeles. He's like, well, that is a good name, Johnny <laughs> Los Angeles. <laughs> so I kept it. <laughs> it actually, Johnny Los Angeles works probably in Sicily. Yeah. Because they don't even know. And it, it works in, in English in America, too. It's like what do you cool. think in Los Angeles it would work? Or would that be? Oh, God. That might be the one place it doesn't work. Because it's like too desperate. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would trust. I would hang out with someone named Johnny Portland in Portland. Really? Just to kind of get a better sense of oh, why yeah. they you are named be, that. <laughs> you'd be at least intrigued to, to, to like tell me more about this, but not necessarily. <laughs> you're, you're not committing to the whole thing. You just want to know. You want all your perspectives about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So if you live, let's just say you live in the city of Portland. Okay, let's, let's assume let's that. Let's just say that. So yeah. how, I'm not, for our listeners, I'm not saying Alex lives in the city of Portland. Mm-hmm. You I'm call us living? In case you have any stalkers, we want to keep your mm-hmm. your, your resident, location of residence safe. Mm-hmm. What's the sweetest, so the distance from where one lives, what's the coolest name? Like what's the sweet spot? Do you want to pick the closest suburb? Like so, for example, uh, no, uh, like Beaverton no. is a is a city right next to Portland. If you live in Portland, would you want to go by like as Bobby Beaverton, <laughs> <laughs> or do you want to pick something really foreign or something not f- too foreign? People need to be able to recognize. Well, that's it. the thing. I think it has to be a famous place. Okay. It can't be the uh, like you know. Hey, I'm uh, I'm yeah. I'm, Will, I'm Willie Hartsdale, <laughs> or, or like you know, like uh, yeah, like Tommy Tampa. That does work. It's, I yeah. wouldn't say it's the coolest name, but it definitely yeah. conveys an image of yeah. if you're Tony Tampa. You definitely see you know a guy with <laughs> frosted like, tips and, a, and a, <laughs> one of those uh, tank tops with like the sleeves are cut. Oh you yeah, know, so, uh, with the aluminum foil Tanner holding up around his neck. Yes, right? exactly. Tom, yeah. I'm Tom, Tom, go talk to Tommy Tampa. Tommy Tampa. That's a, we got to do more tongue twisters, by the way. Oh, did you get? Yeah. The, I, I don't know if you saw. I sent you a link of Sicilian tongue no. twisters. Really? I never I sent it to you. No. I asked, uh, I was talking with Tony Consigli on the oh, phone. Oh, good. And uh, he asked his, did we already talk about that? Well, before I busted out the English ones, yeah. I asked him if he knew any. He said no, but he was going to ask his parents. Okay, yeah. So he asked his parents. Oh, great. And his mother did not know any uh, uh, Sicilian tongue mm. twisters. And she said, no, there's no such thing as Sicilian Whoa. tongue twisters. And Tony was very skeptical about oh, that. He's yeah. like, every language must have some kind yeah. of word, you know, word games. Yeah, in there or yeah. So I looked it up and uh, I found a website that had a list of Sicilian tongue oh, twisters. Oh, excellent. Yeah, send me the link. Okay, we, maybe we'll talk about the bonus content. Yeah, The totally. problem was I couldn't read any of them because they're they're hard enough to read in because they're in Sicilian, let alone that oh. they are tongue twisters as well. So That's true, yeah. <laughs> but they give the English translation. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the translations are, are like much tongue twisters. Yeah, They're know. like it doesn't really help much with the. Uh, I know if you think of ours from from <laughs> a couple episodes ago, one was like I'm a, I'm afraid Fredo. F- <laughs> what was it? I'm afraid Fredo fears. No, I'm afraid. No, of- it was Font- Fontaine for so- What was it? It was it was fan favorite Fontaine foregoes fame. F- family for family fame. for fame. Right. Yeah. And the, the, what would that be translated into? Sicilian? Into like another language, it'd be, no, it'd be like yeah. Johnny Fontaine, uh, 
prefers never fame. got married like where never doesn't <laughs> spend time with his family <laughs> Yes. So why are we talking about some tongue twisters again? Oh, so it's Johnny Portland. Mm-hmm. So you're saying it has to be recognizable, but not too recognizable. No, it can be too recognizable, but if it's going to be recognizable, it can't be in that city. Okay. Mm. Somebody known as you know as as Portland Johnny so, in but, Portland would be we like what? But if you live in Portland, is it cooler and more more of a hipster move to have a nickname? Of one of the suburbs. No. Because, really? Because like suburbs. Vinnie, like Vinnie Vancouver. <laughs> the coup, Vancouver, Washington is kind of a suburb of Portland, Oregon. Well, suburbs are never cooler than cities. For but that's, that's what makes it cool nowadays. I don't know. If you're living in Portland, if you told me your name was like Johnny Vegas. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty cool. It's mm-hmm. absolutely cool. But if you said you were like Vinnie Vancouver. Well, first of all, you were like Gary Gresham. I'd say, oh, that's, Gresham. That's, it's a deep, like it's a all, your thing, cut. all your things are alliteration. You're like Gary Gresham, <laughs> yeah. Bobby Beaverton. <laughs> that's a little cooler. Vin I guess you can, always go with, you can always go with Johnny. <laughs> I think Johnny is the good all-purpose. Yeah. It, sounds, it sounds devil may care. And that, yeah. You know. yeah. Johnny go Vegas. <laughs> uh, no, I still stick with my... my, uh, with my I feel like if you're if you call if your name is like Beaverton Johnny, mm. well then I feel like they're just calling you that to distinguish you from regular Johnny. Oh, okay, yeah, you know what I mean. And you're the guy who comes in. You're from the, the secondary suburbs. person, yeah. And you're the guy who comes lives in the suburbs, and you just come in to be cool. On yeah, the we're weekends. like we're like, hey Johnny, we need you to come in. He's like, okay, it's taking me like half an hour to get there, depending <laughs> on traffic. Like, ah, forget about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, hey, uh, uh, Bobby Beaverton, come on, join us. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, leave the gun. Take the cannoli. Bring the cannoli. <laughs> All right, flipped it. Come on, don't want you to get here into this moment. <laughs> yeah. um, what else you got for this minute? Uh, Anything what, else about the name? Uh, like the, remember, we start, the reason we start talking about this is because in the book, he just says Michael, but in the movie, he says Michael Corleone. Yeah. I think... You, uh, and I guess the question is, do you think... That was the moment, the catalyst that ultimately led Fabrizio to connect with Barzini and everyone else who was looking for him to plant the bomb in Apollonia's gun uh, car. Well, it's funny because when uh, you know Fabrizio is translating all this, as mm-hmm. you mentioned last week, even though Mikey can speak Sicilian, he asks Fabrizio to do the translate. Yeah, um, yeah, it's strange. I think that's a it's a smart move mm-hmm. because as for f- f- a smart move. Uh, on the part of Francis Ford Coppola or on, or on Michael Corleone? On Mikey's part. Why? Well, if I'm in a country, mm-hmm. let's, okay, let's suppose you had a daughter. A okay. super hot daughter with a purple ribbon in her hair. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a 1960s song. <laughs> you got a hot daughter with a purple ribbon <laughs> in her hair. Now, let's suppose this uh, three guys come up to you and... I kick their asses. You start with the strongest guy. No. <laughs> If I was trying to impress the, if I was trying to impress you, I would do a much better whoa, job. Whoa, wait, you are my brother, and you're <laughs> tr- interested in my daughter. I'm your brother. Uh, we- <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's okay. okay. Suppose I'm a stranger who you do not know. Okay, I don't speak your language. Mm-hmm. I have two choices. I can either say to I can either say to my translator, "Listen, tell him what I'm saying," and I can say it however I want, and the mm-hmm. guy does the translation. Or I can come to you and say, eh, "Your daughter, I want to marry your daughter." You know what I mean? I sound uh, like a, I sound like an ignorant hillbilly. Yeah, but there are risks going the other way. First risk is I might think, "Well, this guy is in America and he wants to marry my daughter. He doesn't even speak English. My, how is my daughter going to connect with him?" Mm-hmm. Like that's. That's a real concern. How am I? I mean, who is this guy? It's, it's just, it's that much more removed. He's that much more of a foreigner. Uh-huh. And so I'm, there's that much more mm-hmm. of a barrier between me and this, this punk. Okay. The second one is now you are relying, you are relying on the, on the interpreter's interpretation to communicate your message. Who knows what he's saying? Maybe it's what true. he's saying is, uh, uh, you uh, want to I, your daughter. I am, I am from America and I want to have sex with your daughter and then I will leave her. Um, but my friend Fabrizio is, is a stand up guy. <laughs> That'd be great. 
<laughs> be awesome the whole time like it ended with like the guy giving Fabrizio like five hundred dollars and he's like why are you giving Fabrizio five hundred dollars for me he's like mine you don't be his name <laughs> yeah so it's risky but I see your point I see your point you don't want to come across as someone who's having a, yeah. having an interpreter is more prestigious than fumbling your way through yeah uh, I mean it definitely shows if someone's interpreting for you that it could be it could be a weakness mm-hmm. and. Yeah, it could be seen as a weakness because you don't have the skills, mm-hmm. but it could also be seen as, oh, I, I have someone interpreting for me. Right. I'm too busy to learn another exactly. language. Exactly. Yeah. I've, I can afford yeah. to have people serving in the role of interpreter for yeah. me, just like they're serving as my guide and bodyguards. Right. So, and as for, yeah. as okay. for being American, I think mm-hmm. that would have some prestige Yeah, because at this point, the war just ended. America's richer and more powerful than ever and they're in this backwards little farming yeah. sheep town mm-hmm. like having an american show up at this point yeah you yeah. know Puta writes about that a bit in the next couple minutes so i'm gonna save i'm gonna save it for those okay. minutes um as they start to dialogue yeah. about about meeting apollonia so uh one thing i noticed was that mikey is totally unflappable mm-hmm. when uh the guy when the guy goes in there and starts yelling and for and mikey's like what's that about and then, um, like, he doesn't even say, oh, my gosh, oh, we got to fix this. Or he just goes, like, tell him to come back out here. And it's like he, yeah. it's like he knew he was already going to propose. He was like, okay, I know what I'm going to say to him when he comes. I'll just propose. You know, I'm going to ma- I'm going to tell mm-hmm. him I want to marry his daughter. Like, he, how many times has he done this along the way that yeah. until this was successful? How many, how many restaurants, how many hot girls did he see oh. <laughs> go find their father and be like, I want to marry your daughter? Like, Get the hell out of here. <laughs> this is the eighth Thunderbolt. Yeah, it's that's been there for seven months. That's true. <laughs> that's why he's just so, it's really just routine. <laughs> tell him to come out. Yeah. That tell bruise on out. his face is. Isn't from the isn't from uh, McCluskey. It's from like other fathers, oh. brothers, and yeah. you'd think though by now he wouldn't have learned the Sicilian to say these things. Mm. He's not relying on it. <laughs> Maybe he's just so annoyed by it now. <laughs> Maybe at one point he tried to do it on his own. It was, still mm. wasn't working. So like, oh, forget it. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even think this one was going to work. He was just like, oh, oh, really? Oh, okay, <laughs> he bought it. Do you think all in all the previous seven attempts it played out the same way that the father came out and was like oh yeah these beautiful girls yeah they're awesome and then <laughs> then he realizes yeah and runs back all upset every single time <laughs> but i guess then for reason they, they do seem surprised he's like once he went no they should have been like, oh, no, we asked the father. We, we just, Hey, you guys, let's not open up with the horn dog. We saw this hot girl yeah. routine because <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's not doing us any favors. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I had a friend in high school and college, and he he swore that connecting with girls and getting dates mm-hmm. is all about the numbers. Well, how he so? said it didn't even have like to getting d- their numbers. Yeah. Like connecting with them, get, getting them to go out with them. He said it's, it has little to do with your approach. I mean, obviously your approach has mm-hmm. got to be somewhat sellable, yeah. but you just have to give it to enough girls. And eventually even the, if law it's like, if it's the law of averages says, says you will succeed. You look up. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's 1%, you got to just get to that hundred mark and <laughs> eventually one. Will. Your friend sounds very, uh, interesting. <laughs> He's really, I don't know. maybe there's something to it, you know? <laughs> He's very, what's the word I'm looking for? Not distinguished. Skilled. No, but when you're, uh, when you, um, when you're not mathematical, when you're, what's it called? Like when you're chewed, d- discriminating? analytical, no, it's with a D, dis- uh, discriminate, discerning, dis- discerning, d- discriminatory. Your friend is very discriminating. Discriminating, yeah. That he is a very. But you're being sarcastic. I mean, sarcastic. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, I'll ask out a hundred girls. Maybe one. So, of them what's will... the opposite of non not being discriminating? Uh, slutty. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not slutty because he's only hooking up one. Oh, I know. That's, so that's even worse. He's, he's a failure as a slut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, slut failure. I won't say his name. Yeah, well, that's just, the only time. Let's I just ever... say he's uh he's like uh, Gary Vegas. Gary <laughs> Vegas, slut failure. <laughs> Yeah, the only time I ever slut shame, you've heard that term slut shame. Yeah. Uh-huh. The only time I is when they're not slutty enough. I'm like, hey, come oh. on, man. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> yeah, but that's actually an odd term, slut shaming. Mm-hmm. It should almost be like good girl shaming. Cause because you're not sl- you're not shaming the slut. You're shaming a good girl making her sound like a slut. No, you're shaming the slut for, for sleeping with a lot of guys. That's slut shaming. Right. I'm sorry. That's, that's that's what it should mean, but that's not how people mean it when they say slut shaming. 
right? I think that's how they mean it. Really? Yeah. If some girl, if some girl's like, oh yeah, I had sex with 10 guys and you're like, oh, what a, what a, you know, what a whore you are. Then you'd be like, oh, that's slut shame. You wouldn't say that if a guy said, oh, I slept with 10 girls, but because it's a woman, you're saying, oh, you're a slut. You should be ashamed of yourself. So when you say, so in that scenario, when you say, oh, you're, you're such a whore. Then I, as a third person there, would say, hey, don't say that. You are slut shaming? Yeah. I'm shaming her for being slutty. Huh. Okay. Where, in this case... I don't think... I don't know if that's... Is that you sure? Yeah. It would... Hmm. How often does that happen? You hear that term slut shaming all the time. Right. But I always always thought it was the reverse, that it was someone who is wholesome or, you know, average. That you were, yeah. And someone is making, like, calling them a slut. Yeah. But but erroneously or inaccurately, and someone says, hey, stop slut shaming that person. I think that's the opposite. Well, you know what? We asked. asked, We'll we'll answer. answer. (laughs) (laughs) Did not think that would come up during this. That is a great Godfather admitted bonus content (laughs) (laughs) question. (laughs) Um, so in any you, case, you, oh, you, you, you fly around men all over the world who you slut shame you <laughs> and you come to me. Why do you come to me? See, that would have been a great case for Tom to be like, Hey, Hey, come on. Uh, uh Mikey, you're slut shaming right mm, now. Mm-hmm, like, yeah. If, you never said anything when Sonny was horning it up all over town. That's true. Yeah. So. AKA Connie really is a slut, but Michael shouldn't be dissing her that way. <laughs> yes he should be yeah. if anything he should be saying you're performing a valuable <laughs> service for the wait a minute the don is semi-retired <laughs> any slut shaming done has got to be done by michael <laughs> so you speak to him <laughs> semi-retired we haven't really talked i know we haven't come to that minute yet but yeah i gotta say what that. does a semi-retired don do we'll save he, it he grows his tomatoes yeah <laughs> he reads the funny papers <laughs> funny papers, funny papers. So that's a good thing for the bonus content. We asked, we answered. <laughs> so Wait, what um, else you got this minute? Well, I uh, I like that when Fabrizio comes out, he's like, come on, let's go. Let's it's, go. It's, it's his daughter. Yeah. And, uh, and they also, he, he understands that this could literally be life and death. Oh, yeah. Well, if you notice when he goes, oh, go back in there. And then both Fabrizio and Kahlo both pick up their rifles like yeah. they're getting ready either to <laughs> run or to get into, Isn't or to get into a fight. Yeah. And then, yeah, so, so is, is, who are the two guys who come out with? They're his sons. They're his sons. Yes. Okay. Don, Don Vitelli's sons. Do you have names for these gentlemen? Mm, no. Okay. No, no, I don't. Th- uh, not yet in the book. Okay. There's a whole, there's a lot more in the book coming up when Michael gets to know Apollonia and oh, they yeah, meet right, on the date and all that stuff. Yeah. But as of now, we don't know their names. Uh, I'm just looking in the script, seeing if it says. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't, I know they don't say anything. Uh, she tempt the devil himself. Sicilian subtitles. A type more Greek than Italian. Do you know her? Abruptly, Vitelli stands up. There's no girl like that in this town. My God, I understand. You, Fabrizio, you stop slut shaming, my girl. Tell him to come here. Call him. Fabrizio, you translate. Oh, it just says uh, the two young men they mm. identify. It doesn't mm-hmm. say that they are the other brothers. Yeah. So <laughs> it'd be great I, if they came out and they had the same voice and vocabulary as Apollonia. You you come you leave. You no come back until Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. No, 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 oh, no. no. Yeah. <laughs> uh I think those two actors, the two sons should have been played by um by James Kahn and oh. and uh and and John Cazale <laughs> just wearing like mustaches so oh my like gosh. <laughs> that's the, that was the only way that Paramount would be able to keep um, Al Pacino in the role, you know how they wanted to get rid of him <laughs> to cut costs, they had to re- recycle actors and actresses. And oh, like, Connie is Apollonia. <laughs> and I like how they have to use the headline actors. They don't just use like extras in the movies, <laughs> like the, the name people who we see in every scene. So, uh, Marlon Brando is Don Vitelli. Oh, wow. It's like, oh, it's like yeah, the girls around here, they're virtuous but beautiful. Why, why do you come to me with these questions? <laughs> the audience is so confused. Is yeah. this a dream? Or is this? Yeah. Well, they paint a mustache on them. <laughs> no, they take the mustache off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it sounds like it's like a smackdown. Oh, taking the mustache off. <laughs> Wait, is that? Are you saying that because they're getting ready to fight? Yeah. Or is it because he got punched so hard his mustache came off? <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take the mustache off that guy. So, so who would the bodyguards be played by? Uh, I guess Clemens and like Tessio. <laughs> 
Well, classic, uh, classic, <laughs> classic Clemenza. We should call it when we're referring to both of them. We should yeah, just say Clemenza. Clemenza. Yeah, or to to to, to Menza. <laughs> I think uh, Clement, the actor who played Clemenza, should play Don Tomasino. Mm, that'd that's be, a good that'd one. That'd be a good match. And to save extra money, uh, his wife can write all the dialogue for him. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't have to pay Francis for Coppola to write dialogue. I was going to say Frankie Five Angels could play Don Vitelli, but he, they didn't have to hire him for Godfather 1. Oh, that'd that's be, that'd right. be an additional expense. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Unless they were you, I would totally be up for using him in other roles. In oh, yeah. GF1. Absolutely. And he could be bon, Bonacera. Yeah. He'd be like, you see what they did to my daughter? <laughs> Nazarene, he could be Nazarene. <laughs> they, 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 they're taking hostages, Mike. They're taking hostages, Mikey. They, suspended sentences. <laughs> Why do you ask me to give him suspended sentences? <laughs> <laughs> I've got business. I've got business with the with the, the Rosado brothers. I don't want it disturbed. Is Hyman Roth <laughs> in the book? In GF, mm, the, the Godfather Not book? yet. Hmm. Not yet. I'm thinking probably not, because all the stuff probably with Fredo not. and stuff, all the, yeah. the, the, the modern Johnny plot Ola. of GF2 is not. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's true. They don't even, me they didn't even mention Johnny Ola in GF1. Yeah, they don't yeah, go into any of the... Uh, no. Any of the uh, huh, no flashbacks to young Don Corleone. So In what? In, in Godfather 1. Oh, yeah, in GF1, yeah. Yeah, so boy, maybe. Yeah. I wonder if there will be a reference. I think they should have put a CGI Hyman Roth in the meeting of the five families of the the, the New York families. Oh, to show that Hyman Roth was there. Hmm. Because remember, they is said, that is that even, historically yeah. accurate though? I don't know. It just seems like it would it would stitch it. I would have yeah. I would I would CGI Frank Pantangeli into the GF one in like crowd scenes at the mm -hmm. wedding and yeah. stuff to yeah. establish that he's there. Mm -hmm. And same thing with Hyman Roth. I would, mm. I would CGI a little cameo of, of mm. Hyman Roth okay. in there yeah. at the meeting of the five families. I wonder, you know, as far away as, as Miami Beach, my <laughs> friend Hyman Roth came. <laughs> he's like, hello, I'm talking on my gold telephone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I see that <clears throat> you did not invite Mo Green. <clears throat> <laughs> Again, disrespected. <laughs> so, what time is Mo Green getting here? <laughs> I'm sorry, we uh, we didn't invite him. Uh, uh, but, but, but I promise, we'll have a plaque made and sent out to Vegas. Not even a car <laughs> or an evite. <laughs> <laughs> bring him to this meeting. Yeah, so that's what I would do. Awesome. Um, yeah, we'll have to think about more characters that should be any any opposite that should be from gf1 to well clemenza GF2. dies i know yeah i guess i would put i would put an old um tom hagan in gf3 yeah that's true you can put a lot of people in gf3 yeah yeah well they're not that many most of the people die off from yeah the, from that's true all well, die off yeah. or, or deported <laughs> di died so natural, natural or otherwise <laughs> oh no and the only reason hyman roth is in is in, is in all the movies is because he always made money for his partners <laughs> oh, so you have him in GF3 too? <laughs> Why not? I mean, you actually never see him die. You see him shot in the airport, Ooh, right? Yeah. You never see him die. Maybe, Maybe they repatriated him to Israel and he's in witness. Maybe he's still alive right now. <laughs> Dying from the same heart attack. <laughs> Five shots and he's still alive? <laughs> yeah. I would have it so that uh, when Mikey has his uh, diabetic uh, stroke mm. or whatever and you have him in the hospital and then Hyman Roth would be in the next bed and he pulls the sheet, <laughs> Hello, Michael. <laughs> he holds the pillow over his head. <laughs> <laughs> or you just see Mikey laying there. And then over the next bed, you're... <laughs> oh, and it just cuts to black. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing a baseball game really loud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, would you turn that down? Uh, yeah. You'll break my eardrums. <laughs> That's great. You, you and vaguely under under the sound of the the blaring mm -hmm. baseball game on the television set, you hear something like, "I I, I need a doctor that speaks English." <laughs> Flying my doctor from Miami Beach. Oh, I can't wait to get to Hyman Roth. <laughs> Soon enough. So, if you had to, put, I would say the four. Who are the f mm. who are the four most fun characters? Oh. Of, all GF one through three. Yeah, one. Th la, la. You now, think? do we have to pick at least one from all three, or are you just keeping it completely no, you open? You can mix ended? it up. You oh, can... Okay, well, I'm gonna rethink that. Okay, because hmm. that la, la. is fun to say. That <laughs> sure as a character. But anything, it should be more Vincent's school. <laughs> I know. Oh boy, so many. Uh, probably Fredo, 
Frank Prantangeli, Don Corleone, Ivan Roth. And um, that's four. I mean, Mo Green. Why does it say we McCluskey joke? or Waltz? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess they're not in it that much. I know. But they are fun. <laughs> Oh, that means you oh. can make a totally good movie just about the supporting characters. You could, yeah. <laughs> hey, in this in this minute when Don Vitelli comes from the back of the restaurant, uh, those instead of his sons, he's got McCluskey and Walt oh, in perfect. character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> God damn it, uh, Don Vitelli, stand him up. I'll take care of him. And another young punk. <laughs> he's got the bullet hole in his in his throat. <laughs> I can understand why McCluskey would be. I don't know why Jack Walt. <laughs> Well, because he's he's because he flies all over the world. Oh. He's he's there looking Let's for see, ten. He heard about Apollonia. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna make her a big star, <laughs> Mike. I heard there was this really uh, hot local girl here with a yeah, purple Mike. ribbon in her hand. <laughs> yeah, she could. No, be there's no girls like that in this village. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's where Mikey goes. No, nah. yeah, gets all mad. Yeah, Mikey. I, uh, she could be Walt's International's next protege. <laughs> <laughs> Driving lessons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So, uh, you want to rate this minute? I'm, I'm, I'm going back. <laughs> Think about what happened. So, he Can comes back. He again? introduces himself, and, and Mike much, that's class. Fabrizio fetches Apollonia's father. Yeah, they like come he apologizes out. for the disrespect and mm-hmm. reveals his identity. It's Miguel mm-hmm. Corleone. Yeah. Well, so getting back to that for a second, when. Mm-hmm. Um, Fabrizio says that. I always thought Fabrizio was saying it as if, like, he knew. Well, that's he's like, why it's... From, he's like, Michael Corleone. Like, oh, really? Well, see, this is who you're talking to. See, that is different than the book. I know. Because in the book, it's clear that Carlo and Fabrizio do not know the identity until of that, Michael. Until that. I don't even... Oh, they know his name. Yeah. I think they know his name. First name. Right. Because he doesn't... He doesn't... Or maybe, I mean, he doesn't react when he hears Michael Corleone. No. The, Fabrizio doesn't react. He just he, interprets. So that either means that he already knew it or mm-hmm. that he that the name doesn't mean anything yeah. to him. Yeah. He probably thought it was a fake name. Because like, again, That's who's, who's, who's going to say, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Alex. Uh, <laughs> looking at the yeah. first sign. <laughs> uh, Cafe. Uh, John uh, Glass. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Portland. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so his name uh, is. Um, <laughs> is there a guy's name that starts with sh? With, with sh. The sound sh, like sh. sh. Oh, Shaw. His name is uh, Sean, Sean. Sean Champagne Cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible name. <laughs> Sean Champagne Cocktails. His name is Sean Cocktails, and his nickname <laughs> is Champagne. <laughs> Or is his or is his name uh, Sean Champagne and everyone just called him Champagne uh, Cocktails because that's like his. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to rate it. Let's rate it. I got my brain. I got mine. I'm okay. locked in. I'm locked Ready? in. Here we go. One, two. Ooh, we're in sync. Yeah, we are in, in sync. sync. In sync. Yeah, I think the last episode just beats this one out because there's a little bit of comedy. There's a little bit more comedy. Stunting all the comedy with these two bodyguards. You're playing all that comedy. Funny papers. <laughs> it's like, I'm reading this uh, in the comedy. hospital. I'm reading, reading about this in the funny paper. Speaking about funny papers and the bonus content upcoming, don't forget, we're going to talk about headlines, mm-hmm. political cartoons, which could be funny papers. Mm-hmm. And we added a new bonus, a recurring uh, Beatles song. What would be? What would the Beatles have written about? For this minute in the Godfather, or we, we yeah we take a Beatles song and customize mm-hmm. it to fit this this minute. So. We should actually be doing post Beatles like Wings and Yoko and Plastic Ono Band because this is the movie came out in the early seventies. Well, right. m- maybe we should save that for GF two. GF two will be oh. solo solo material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then GF3 yeah. will be all Julian Lennon songs uh, and uh, Danny Harrison and yeah. uh, Sean Lennon songs, The Next Generation. Yeah. And but the, you know, Paul McCartney has a performing son? Jesse McCartney? Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's too bad we can't use their post Beatles stuff because for this minute they could do Mikey on the run. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey's got a gun. I guess he could apply it to Fredo and GF2. Yeah. Or in, Cuba, in Cuba after the new after the coup starts. Yeah, totally. Fredo's yeah. on the run. <laughs> Any word from Fredo? Fredo's <laughs> on the run. Oh no, that would that would be in uh, GF one. What do you mean? 
when they go to Vegas and Mikey kicks the 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 ends the party in Las yeah, Vegas and yeah. the band leaves because uh-huh. they be a band on the run. I don't know what's wrong with the mouth. I don't know what's wrong with them. <laughs> well, well I'm all, oh, I'll save it. I'll save it. <laughs> Just keep going. All right. So, Man, anything uh, else for the bonus content? Those are recurring items. Right. But anything else? Well, there was one that we didn't talk about last week. Yeah, we had Godfather horoscopes. Horoscopes. Oh, although we don't have their birthdays, so we'd really be just creating the content. Yeah. Right? Yeah, maybe. We have, I have all kinds of backups. I've got, uh, oh, we got more. We already did tongue twisters, parody songs. Maybe we could reverse engineer it and read like the description of what Scorpios are like and then be like, oh, well, that's oh, clearly oh, Luca Brazzi, or that's sunny. in this scene and choose a scene. <laughs> well, I don't you think it should just tie into the scene. Well, no, I mean going back and and through all the scenes that we've analyzed so far. So if it said like this person didn't know where, didn't know like sorry, not this person. It's always in the the, the first person or second person. You are you've got a decision to make. Yeah, uh, but but you must be deceitful. Like oh, that's Luca Brazzi going to be a spy in the Tatalia family. All right, so how about this? First, we determine everyone's horoscope. Okay. And then we, we can apply them as yes. time goes on. Okay. And maybe we should check, too, to make sure they don't have a birth date. I yeah. looked online. No, it sounds like it's getting uh, complicated. Yeah, it is. All right, we'll figure well, something out. Well, we got out. some other things, too. Yeah. We have what if each character had a podcast? What were their <laughs> content? And Let's do that. Well, let's do the podcast. Let's do, that, really? let's do the podcast one. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, until then, boy, we need a new sign. We need a new sign off. Well, first of all, we haven't done this before we sign off. Mm-hmm. How many minutes is it until uh, the the shooting on the Park Causeway? That's true. We haven't done it in a long time. Sonny long gets time. shot on the Causeway. Minuto one hundred nineteen. So we have what fifteen minutes left? Yeah, only fifteen minutes left. Six, right. Sixteen minutes left. Sixteen. Minutes. Yeah. Pophead Jinko, you're stuck with Hagen. The lobster might not even be in the car, Sonny. But he's right to steal his heart. Lots of money he'll be making. A lot of money in that white car. No, see, I'm home. Made a big mistake, should have kept your mouth shut. Sonny was hot for my deal, and you can't talk business with him. And Carlo made a mess, now you gotta clean it up. Now clean it up! In a coma, Fredo's losing his mind Where the hell is Luca? You are out of time Tick tock, tick tock, we're counting down every day What can I do? What can I do? To get the car, I've got to make it through the causeway Sonny on the, Sonny on the, Sonny on the causeway Listen to me, you better listen to Clemenza's wife all right, not not long now. All right, so stick around for the bonus content. Please leave us on a, a review on iTunes, on Facebook. Join the discussions on Fredo Corleone's Mickey Mouse Nightclub on Facebook. I, we've been seeing a ton of awesome memes. Oh yeah, the it memes is, are it uh... is meme sane. <laughs> Meme sanity. <laughs> Meme sanity. Uh, yeah, and also if you want to shoot us an email, yeah. including sending us your Zaza yeah. file, uh, that's godfatherminute at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you, we've already gotten a lot of Zaza MP3s. Thank you for sending them. Or we haven't forgotten about you. We're compiling them. And when we get a critical mass, we'll release Once we them. have two hours worth of, <laughs> of Zaza's. <laughs> <laughs> One of our fans even did a whole mix with the beats and stuff. It's oh fantastic. wow! Oh my gosh! Oh, it's so cool. Maybe we should play one of those just as a as a as, teaser. If they put in all that work for okay. it, we should reach should reward them for okay, the uh, cool. Or the other thing is that eventually you should write a Zaza song and use all everyone's Zazas oh. in it so everyone gets to be a part of the song. Oh, that's fun. It's kind of like a We Are the World. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Except that's for totally Zazas. Zaza. <laughs> All right, so that'll wrap up the show. So until next time, we want no acts of vengeance. vengeance.